Hello everybody, welcome back to Jordan Samuel Skin Talks. How you doing? We are in New York City now. So this is temporary setup. I really, long story short, got a new couch. Delivery company somehow lost a couch, so we don't have a couch, which is sort of where I was planning on setting up for Jordan Samuel Skin Talks, some Instagram Live stuff. But now we're in the bedroom because with the light, I feel like it's maybe a good setup. And I know you would miss this. I know it's not a halo over me, but I thought you might miss this. So, at least for the first video, it's here. And who knows how many videos I'll be doing in September until I can figure out this new norm. Gamash is here. Anyway, hi, welcome back. How are we? It's almost fall. It's after Labor Day, which I can't believe. Um, but on that note, I wanted to touch on getting, sort of finding, I don't want to say your new routine, but Labor Day, I think for most people, always is a sign of getting back to consistency, getting back to routine. Um, and this year, it's probably going to be a little bit, a lot uh, different, and maybe that won't be the case for many. Um, and dealing with homeschooling kids or partially homeschooling, um, working from home, which I know we all dealt with last year, but I think we thought it was maybe, well, whatever, I won't get into that. Um, but anyway, uh, so I wanted to talk about sort of the fundamentals, the foundation um, of a really great skincare routine. Now this doesn't mean that your skincare routine has to stop at this. Maybe once in a while you have band-aid products to help with a certain skin issue or condition that's temporary. These are sort of your tried and true, for the most part, everyday um, products and uh, it can fit into your routine however you like. Don't take this as, you know, set in stone, but this is just generalization. Starting with a great cleanser. Obs, you know what Jordan Samuel Skin, we obsess over cleansing and proper cleansing with non-foaming cleansers. So finding a right cleanser for you. That cleanser, you can have one cleanser that can do everything. It can be your morning cleanse, can be your night cleanse, can be your first cleanse, and can be your second cleanse. The same product can do it all. It can be a water-soluble product, it can be an oil-based product, it depends on your skin condition and skin type. You, If you want multiple cleansers, that is fine. You do not have to have a ton of cleansers. Most people find that they like two cleansers where they have their first cleanse in the evening and then they have a second cleanse and a morning cleanse which happens to be the same cleanse. Noting that that first cleanse, which might be a little bit more nourishing, can get into a morning cleanse come fall winter if their skin that's sort of more like what i do um but so cleanser obviously next would be exfoliation that exfoliation does not have to be an acid toner it can be it can be an acid mask um that's what i prefer i prefer exfoliating masks um that i leave on 10 15 20 minutes i remove with a warm wet washcloth and I don't have the irritation and inflammation I can get from leave-on acids. Uh, also remembering that your acid product does not have to be and really should not be every day. We are over exfoliating. It is a big issue that I see that I'm correcting a lot of, which is why Jordan Samuel Skin products have become so successful because we're really helping get that barrier back from over exfoliating, from overusing high strength vitamin A products, prescription products, and, and not using them correctly and not equally building up the barrier. Three, I'm sort of doing this in a, well, I'll do it in a sort of-ish order. Three would be a antioxidant product. Can that be vitamin C? Absolutely. I'm obviously sensitive to vitamin C. It can be something like your Sierra Antioxidante from our Italian collection, which is a beautiful antioxidant serum um, that is vitamin C free. Of course, you know I'm gonna say SPF. Think of your SPF like your daytime moisturizer. For some, it might be, depending on your skin type and skin condition. For some, you might need a moisturizer under there. Um, but the best way to make that SPF a 365, um, routine or consistency in your routine is to think of it like your daytime moisturizer. That's how I think of it. I, you know, cleanse, do my serums, and then I put the SPF on like it is my moisturizer. It's the easiest way to use it and to keep it consistent in my routine. Last would be your moisturizer. You can think of it as your nighttime moisturizer if you'd like, 
or it can be that moisturizer that you use at nighttime and you use prior to your SPF, again, depending on your skin condition. Those are your five uh, in terms of a really great, consistent foundational routine. It does not have to stop there, but if you do not have those five products dialed in, I would dial those in first before you do anything else. I know that some people really like to get excited about an eye product or a mask, or, and those are all great um, and can be extremely useful, but make sure these, you know, cleansing, exfoliation, sun protection, antioxidants, uh, and a great moisturizer. Now, yes, there's variations. With all of that, antioxidants can also mean a retinol or a vitamin A product. The moisturizer could also have vitamin A or retinol in there. That's neither here nor there for this video, but you get what I'm saying. That's just a really great foundational routine, um, really for most people and, and most skin types and skin conditions can find some, th yeah, for sure, cleansing, exfoliation, sun protection, antioxidants, and moisturizer. Even, you know, from oily, oily, oily to extremely dry and dehydrated. Um, the other, th oh my God, Gamash is now going to clean himself for you. He was very good on the flight from Seattle to New York, so I think he wants to be in this first video in New York. He's a New York City kitty now. Anyway, he's been amazing. And he's 19, and he just had a physical, and he's so healthy. The doctor talks that he's like the wonder kitty. Anyway. Um, is now seasonal transitioning with skincare from summer to fall. And this, again, is something else that's not set in stone because you can really start a retinol product at any time you feel like it. However, if there ever is a very good time to start one, I would say it's the fall and winter um, in the Northern Hemisphere, that is, just because of the fact that chances are of you being outside in the sun less than they would be in the spring and summer, chances of you laying out at a beach, probably very little. Um, and, and while you can, you know, there's that myth where you can't use a, a vitamin A product during the day, um, an over-the-counter vitamin A product that is, that I'm speaking of, um, because your skin's gonna be sensitive to the sun whether you wear it at night and then, you know, wash it off and you go outside or you're wearing it outside. The whole thing is just about being protected with sunscreen. The thing with that is in the summer, the chance of you having the SPF rinsed off from being in the pool or being in the beach or sweating it off is so much greater than in fall. And you're probably not reapplying as well. Um, so anyway, if there is ever a time to step into retinol, it is now. It can, in the beginning, show a little bit of sensitivity to the skin, a little bit of peeling to the skin. Now remember, that does not mean, if you don't have those things, if you don't have sensitivities and you don't have peeling, that does not mean you need to bump up in strength and that does not mean it is not working. It is, I guess you could say, a side effect. Some people have it, some people don't. For me, I get a little bit more redness in my skin tone and very little peeling. Some people, like my husband, maybe a touch of sensitivity where he feels it, but really no redness and no peeling. So it depends on your skin type, your skin, can, skin condition, and where you were at. Um, but retinol, introducing it in the fall if you're new, a great place to start is, yes, it's my channel, I'm gonna promote our products, but our retinol treatment oil. We talk in strengths, not percentages, um, to sort of delve out confusion, because even with percentages, some formulas can be completely different. Um, so our retinol treatment oil is very much a gentle, strength baby's first step into retinol so if you are somebody that's more normal combination dry dehydrated are looking for a great first retinol would be a retinol treatment oil or somebody who is normally naturally sensitive to vitamin a products and i know there's so many out there that love a retinol treatment oil for that reason but fall is really the time to start introducing retinol into your routine if you're already using retinol in your routine maybe you step it up Maybe you just add one, maybe you don't step up the strength, maybe you step up one more night of usage and you stay on that for weeks and weeks and weeks until you're ready to then add another night or possibly go up in strength. You get the picture. Another great thing to do for this season transition is really hone in on your cleansing. So many of us want to run to a heavier, richer moisturizer 
which can be appropriate in some occasions, but usually I find people use possibly a great cleanser in spring, summer, and they continue using that in fall, winter, and then go to the heavier moisturizers, where change, just something as simple as changing your cleanser can really change a lot with your skincare routine. For me personally, I'm now probably gonna to switch to almost twice a day after show sensitive. I, spring, summer, am matinee almost morning and night, uh, or almost always morning and night, maybe randomly depending on SPF usage and amount I have on, I'll go in with the after show first. Um, but now I'll probably go to a morning, evening, after show sensitive. Um, and just have that be sort of my one and done cleanser. But <clears throat> it really is so important to also hone in on the cleansing step as much as you do with your serums and your moisturizers. Because I feel like people ignore that step, go here with the heavier products, but yet they're still cleansing and maybe using something that now in these colder, uh, drier months uh, can be a little bit too cleansing for their skin and, and leave a little bit of surface dryness and surface dehydration, which then leads them running to put on their serums and their moisturizers and all these other things and creating sort of a more even base from the get-go. Um, but just a little food for thought as we get into our September, I don't want to use the term normal because nothing is normal, uh, but just consistency and schedule of, of creating that great foundational skincare routine and then transitioning into fall with products that are appropriate for this season in the Northern Hemisphere. I say that because I know there's people, I always say something and then there's somebody in Australia or New Zealand or elsewhere who will come out and say, excuse me, like it's summer here, which I know, I understand, I forgot. We're just keeping it where I am now, which is New York. So that's why I'm talking in these terms. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming into my bedroom and having this lovely little chat with me. I feel like next time the video won't be here. I probably won't be filming a video again until I can find a place where it's comfortable with lights, etc., etc. But anyway, Happy fall, almost fall. I think almost fall by the time this goes up, not fall yet. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope you have a, I hope you had a lovely summer. I hope you had a lovely Labor Day and I hope you have a lovely fall. Uh, until next time, bye.